Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Amplify Reading Customer Panel. My name is Laura Almazara, and I work on the literacy team here at Amplify. We're so excited to have you here with us today. And before we get started, I wanted to share a few things. Today's webinar will be recorded, and we're going to email out a recording link for you to rewatch as you'd like. And everyone here with us today will receive a certificate of attendance as well as a presentation deck. If you want to access the captions, you can click on Live Transcript, the CC button down in the bottom tray. And throughout the webinar, if you have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A and we welcome um, comments in the chat. Before we get started, I just want to let you know this is unfortunately the last webinar in our fall series, The Science of Reading is for Everyone, but we have so much more to share for you. All of our previous webinars are available on demand at that link, amplify.com slash SOR-everyone-fall2022. And some of the webinars we're highlighting here are, are a little bit related to what we're talking about today. Um, so we have Building a Science of Reading System, de Demystifying MTSS, Adapt, Enrich, Remediate, Accelerate, Using Personalized Learning in Your Literacy System, Transforming Together, Creating a Culture of Community and Professional Learning at Your School, and our recent M-Class customer panel from a couple weeks ago. So to get us started, we'd love to hear where you all are joining us from and what your role in education is. So please pop that in the chat. We got some some people joining us from cold areas. Yep. And thank you all so much for joining us this week. We know it's it's very near the end of the term, the end of the the um, calendar year. So we know that you've got a lot going on. So we really appreciate you taking the time out today. We have Wisconsin, so much snow. I know, right? San Francisco on the other side. Let's see. New Jersey. Sarah Grafton in North Carolina. Yay. And there's South Carolina. Oh man, someone's already missed five days of school because of ice, snow, and cold. Too early in the year for that. Oh my goodness. Goodness gracious. All right. Well, let's go ahead and get us started because we are super excited to be here today. We have so many great educators within our panelists that are going to get to talk about Amplify Reading. So my name is Carissa Snyder, and I am a literacy specialist here at Amplify. But before working at Amplify, I was a first grade teacher, and I actually got to use Amplify reading within my classroom in my beautiful state of Colorado, where it's also starting to get colder, not so much um, like, you know, zero degrees. It's not necessarily snowing today, um, but it is truly rewarding to, you know, be here, talk to you about a program that I got to use and listen to your experiences as well. And then speak, of course, to our wonderful panelists and hear their stories, because that's why we're here today. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this along to my colleague, and then we're going to get to hear from our lovely panelists. Hello, everybody. I am here from the coast of North Carolina. I started my career as a classroom teacher, then I became a building level literacy specialist, the last role in my district here, New Hanover County in uh, Wilmington, North Carolina. I was the ELA supervisor, pre-K through early college. And then about eight years ago, I joined Amplify. Since then, I've been traveling around the country, working with teachers and administrators as they transition toward curriculum aligned with the science of reading. So we're so excited to be here with you today and see that you are here from the West, the North, the South, the East, and, and everywhere in between. Yes, perfect. And you know what, we had a little spot in here too to see who was joining us, but it was so great to hear so much from outside of the panel and just hearing outside of Amplify. So thank you so much. And if you didn't get to and you're just joining us, please tell us a little bit about where you're joining us from. And if you want, you can share your title as we love to see that as well. But today we have some very important people here. And um, these are our Amplify partners who are currently implementing Amplify Reading. So I'm gonna go ahead and pass the mic and let them introduce themselves to you um, sharing a little bit about who they are, maybe their educational background, their current role, and then something about their district. So we're going to go first with Ms. Martina. Um, if you can please get us started. Good morning, everybody. My name is Martina Stelter. I am a current third grade teacher in a rural little town um, of Orfordville in 
southern Wisconsin, right on the border between uh, Wisconsin and Illinois. Um, as well as being a third grade teacher, I am a district technology integrator. So it's my role to work with teachers throughout the district at both the elementary, the middle, and the high school and help support them as they integrate technology, which is an awesome thing um, because Amplify Reading is a technology piece that we utilize. Great. Thank you so much, Martina. Uh, Ms. Jaylene? Um, hi, I'm Jaylene Zucker. I'm from Tucson, Arizona, and at my school, I work at a Title I school. We're fully Title I, and I am the intervention curriculum support and data specialist. So my school has been using multiple Amplify products, especially Amplify Reading for about two years now. And I've been the head runner of that. Um, I use all facets of it as like with intervention, data specialty and Amplify Reading has been a huge improvement inside our classroom and working with the computers. Perfect, so it's two techies. We're so glad that you're here. Thank you so much. Christopher. Hi everyone, my name is Christopher Knighting. I am coming to you from Baltimore City in Maryland, um, also on the East Coast, um, slightly north of Cynthia. Um, I am the K-8 Literacy Specialist in the Literacy Office. We have about 160 schools in Baltimore City with about 80,000 students. So obviously we are a large urban district. We have partnered with Amplify for over a decade. Uh, primarily through M class um, being our diagnostic, uh, which is a huge benefit for us in K through five. But then specifically with Amplify Reading, we were very much an early adopter um, via the pandemic. Uh, and so this is actually three plus years for us with Amplify Reading. And it definitely fills a niche for us with our R3 uh, strategy, which is all about reimagining, restoring, and re reconnecting with our students in a virtual uh, manner for foundational literacy skills. Um, so we're definitely huge supporters of that platform and also partners with Amplify. Great. Thank you so much, Mr. Christopher. And then, of course, Ms. Colleen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Colleen Reyes. I uh, am from Onslow County Schools in eastern North Carolina, a small military town. I'm currently an assistant principal um, here in Sneeds Ferry, North Carolina, and a former teacher, I have taught first grade and second grade within the district. Our district is the 11th largest district in North Carolina, about 30,000 students to give you an idea for size. About 25 of those um, of our schools are elementary school in our district. So that is who we're serving. And uh, just like everyone else on the panel, we are uh, excited to be Amplify partners. So looking forward to our conversation today. Yes, absolutely. And thank you so much. And it's so great to hear from a large gamut of we, as we all have different backgrounds, you know, either teaching in a smaller district, teaching in title school, teaching in a huge district. Um, so hopefully someone can really get to connect with each of our different panelists within your different situations. Um, and so as they were talking about, you know, some of the other Amplify products, I do want to just level set here and just talk about what is Amplify. So we start here because when we think about a strong literacy system, you know, going into those MTSS um, and knowing that everything is going to be centered around data, MTSS and going into a strong literacy component, there are really three main factors um, in these components. So we're looking at assessment tools, we're looking at core curriculum, and then of course, personalized instruction and making sure that these three main components are all working together seamlessly. Um, going into MTSS or going into the science of reading, how they can essentially be working together because we're trying to be preventative for our kids. And so this is where Amplify Reading um, is going to fit into that personalized instruction. So to kind of level the playing field, just in case some folks are new on what is Amplify Reading or I just we just got implementing it this year and I'm not exactly sure. So Amplify Reading is a personalized instruction that your kids will get to go on. It's a digital journey that provides them with adaptive learning and practice, and it's going to do two things. It's going to both remediate and it's going to accelerate that instruction for your students from kindergarten into fifth grade. It can work alongside with any core program. Um, we did hear from some folks who are utilizing some of our core programs like CKLA, but you can use it with anything. 
Um, and it will really just fit the needs with personalizing that instruction because it, it too is centered around the science of reading and kids don't know. They think that it's this game. They'll be like, Mrs. Snyder, can we play that game again? Um, but it is truly um, going into and it's moving the needle forward and giving teachers more time back because we know that there's a program that is providing this personalized instruction for them. So the way that this is done is Amplify Reading can place your kids in a couple of different ways. So they can either take a placement assessment and we'll talk about the newer one, it's called a benchmark assessment. They can go through M class. M class is going to be our universal screener and it'll automatically place them. Or you can use some other third party uh, data to place your kids. And then from there, it'll put them in this adaptive instruction within their own storyline. So. From here, you can honestly use Amplify Reading, and we're going to get to hear from our panelists in a variety of different ways. Some folks can use it for small group instruction. Maybe you're pulling kids and we have a listening center, so they're going to be on Amplify Reading. Maybe you have a win time and you can use it there. So I would actually really love to hear from our panelists just on how they started their journey and also listening to how Amplify Reading uh, first is put into just some of their different models and how we started this capacity around the science of reading because Amplify Reading 2 is um, based on a solid scope and sequence. So we're going to first start with um, how have you built capacity around the science of reading? So Colleen, I would love for you, because I know before we were, um, I was doing a pre-call with Colleen and there was a big tornado in Louisiana and our time got interrupted, but you were talking about um, building your capacity around the science of reading to prepare your teachers and most importantly, your kids for something like Amplify Reading. So would you mind starting us off? Absolutely. Um, so our district has been, um, and our state really, the state of North Carolina has uh, been a big proponent of the science of reading. And so um, as far as to even go into having all um, North Carolina teachers and educators are um, completing a training in the language essentials for teachers of reading and spelling, which most people know as the letters program. Mm -hmm. um, and so that has given our teachers a foundation and have built our capacity for um, just providing the, the groundwork of what is the science of reading, how is it, um, how can it impact our students and what can we do to um, kind of help our students learn and grow. And so um, that's something that our district and state has done to kind of begin um, that work. And then uh, a few other things. I mean, you mentioned earlier utilizing core curriculum and we're using CKLA, we're using our M class assessments. And then that leads us all into our um, personalized, and personalized instruction path and, um, you know, tying in that Amplify reading to just further develop um, our students. So it's kind of how we got started and have built capacity around, um, around the science of reading. Well, thank you. And it sounded like you said, kind of building your knowledge yourself. So building capacity first within ourselves. So getting teachers and ourselves trained within letters to truly understand it, and then trickling it down through core instruction. We know it's a variety of things, core instruction assessment, and then how are we still giving all kids what they need, not just those who are well below or below the benchmark, but what about our kids on grade level and above grade level, right? They too deserve high quality instruction as well. Um, before we pass it, is there anyone else, either Christopher, Martina, or Jaylene, who would like to jump in on how you, um, within yourself or maybe within your districts, have started to build capacity around the science of reading or the work that's gone into each of your respective districts? So I can speak to this. Um, this was something that was really, really done. The work was done um, at our district this past summer. We did a very intensive book study and then online course um, called Shifting the Balance. And it was the six shifts and just the, the conversation um, occurred around the science of reading. 
we too use CKLA in our building and then the, um, the, the middle school uses ELA. So just being able to understand why Amplify works the way that it does and why it's structured the way that it is was really beneficial um, because we did all of that additional work this summer to understand what that slogan, right, uh, science of reading really means. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much. And so for those of you, um, and I saw Christopher, maybe we can jump into you next. Um, for So for those of you within CKLA, that stands for the Core Knowledge Language Arts. That's a core program. But what's great about CKLA with Amplify Reading, which is personalized instruction and your core instruction, is they have the same scope and sequence. So students who are receiving decoding um, through your core instruction at a tier one level will also get to see that kind of instruction. It'll kind of be reintroduced or to re um, uh, to review that instruction in Amplify Reading. So they'll receive personalized instruction there. Um, but Christopher, I would love to hear yep. your story as well going in decade, a decade into Amplify. So it sounds like you probably have a good start because we know uh, building capacity and MTSS doesn't just happen overnight. So exactly. tell us a little bit about what that looks like in your district. Yep. Uh, similar to what Colleen and Martina were discussing that um, the three buckets that I, I really appreciate the how they capture um, what they were saying, that professional development for staff, building that internal capacity, it's not only for teachers, but it's also for administrators, whether they're an administrator at the school level or at the district level. That's definitely very important around the science of reading. Um, secondly, what is your core curriculum? We happen to use uh, Wilson's Foundations, and we do that in pre-K through third grade. Um, so that's very important, again, that it follows the science of reading for systematic and tiered explicit instruction. And we also added Hegarty um, a couple years ago to have another component with phonemic awareness. Um, and then third, obviously, with in-class, making sure that that very discrete data Dibble's data through M class is very much parallel and congruent to what is in, uh, being instructed in the classroom. So basically, they're all speaking the same language with the science of reading. And we've actually shifted away from that SOR because a lot of times I think in some circles, uh, it's a little loaded. Uh, people are mm -hmm. looking at a science of reading and a little bit of a deficit. Uh, versus an asset um, based uh, kind of a conversation. And we're talking about the five pillars of instruction versus the program. So it's very important that the science of reading is based on the scientific approach using the pillars and making sure that you have the components uh, for instruction, building capacity with your staff, and also the assessment all woven together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like just looking at what is like redefining the science of reading, using the five pillars as that definition, and then looking at instructional practices to be utilized, what programs, what resources are we using for those instructional practices around the science of reading? And that's kind of where you all started as well. Ms. Jaylene, do you have anything to add within building your capacity just as yourself personally, or just what you've seen within your school and district as well? Of course. Um, so we also did a very similar process. Uh, in Arizona, we have a law called Move On When Reading, where uh, all students have, we have to present them with uh, assessment data showing that they are at reading level by the time they're in third grade. With that, um, we often are uh, have to find a set uh, assessment in order to figure out where they are, like a universal screener, and show it to the state that we have it. And Dibbles is one of our biggest used ones. When we found out that M class streamlines into Dibbles and has this wonderful new program that streamlines further, that's mm -hmm. kind of what led us to um, hearing all about the science of reading and Amplify products and everything. And that was our beginning of the journey. And as I continued personally a lot more getting into it, uh, because my position has to do a lot with figuring out all the data and where to go with it. Uh, we started seeing a lot of really good things that we could pull using the science of reading just as a set foundation. Uh, my school, since I'm in Arizona, we're right next to Mexico. We have about a 58% population of EL students. So oftentimes we will have some fifth graders that come to us not speaking any English. Mm -hmm. And I realized while I was researching everything that using the signs of reading with those that building blocks and the way it kind of weaves together, like you were saying, 
it is super easy to be able to place certain students in these different levels, especially when they're older, but their reading levels in a certain language is different and figuring out the difference between the science of reading and reading and literacy in itself and actually understanding learning another language. So that has been extremely helpful and I've personally been taking it upon myself to help and work with my teachers to help them learn and understand where it comes from. And we also use CKLA and all the other products that work with it too. So that's kind of, I kind of just forced everybody into it because I found it to be an exceptional product and really puts it into a great understanding for people who aren't necessarily used to working with people who can understand reading and literacy, but not necessarily the language. So I mm -hmm. thought it fit perfect. Oh, per and you just hit it on the head as well. And we have to think about our other students and looking at by literacy and how we use that as an asset as well. So it sounds like building capacity starts within ourselves with what knowledge do we know about the science of reading? Let's level set with what is the science of reading when we talk about it or what is it when your district or when Amplify talks about it and then using um, instructional practices to then put into place for your kids um, to see what is missing or what can we start to reevaluate within our current curricular or our current processes that we have across the board. So in that thought process, and I'm going to pass this over to, to Ms. Cynthia, you know, bringing into what was a contributing factor for your consideration to even use Amplify Reading as a supplemental product. So I'm going to pass it to Ms. Cynthia, um, and then um, we'll get to hear from our lovely panelists as well. Thank you, Carissa. Well, hearing from all of them, it, it's interesting how so many of you do use several Amplify products. That was not necessarily a, a requirement for you to serve on this panel, but I also appreciated hearing from Christopher. I know that um, though you do use some of our products, you have a, a different core. Um, when you and I talked earlier, we also talked about the pandemic, and you mentioned that as well. Um, so in thinking about this question, the factors that contributed to your district's consideration of Amplify Reading, talk to us, Christopher, about um, using Amplify Reading through the pandemic and maybe any other factors that influenced your, your decision. Yep. Um... I would say first and foremost, it's important to recognize in city schools, Baltimore city schools, that we have a long standing relationship with the Amplify organization. So there's a lot of trust and respect uh, as far as our long term relationship, obviously starting with the different versions of Dibbles, whether, you know, Dibbles 8 or whatever version currently uh, we're on that it's important for us to understand that that relationship was embedded in trust and respect. And when the pandemic started and we needed something that virtually was going to support our students, teachers were doing the direct instruction, explicit instruction with Hegarty, with foundations via you know, Zoom or via Teams meetings. However, what did that accelerated learning or personalized instruction look like? Um, we needed to have a product that was seamless, that the data was immediately available, that there weren't like conflicting different versions of data in conflict. So because of that relationship with Amplify, because of our backstory and being able to navigate what our needs were, you know, it was a pretty seamless process for us to move into adopting Amplify uh, for K to five, to be honest. Um, and it was really important for us to really build on then what teachers were not only putting this in front of students and allowing them to participate in it, but then how they were benefiting from understanding the data, seeing the trajectory and the movement of their students with foundational skills, also looking at their, um, their, their dashboard for in-class data, because you as the instructor then pretty much have a wealth of data available at your fingertips. If students are actively engaged in Amplify Reading, if your foundational instruction with, in our case, foundations and Hegarty is really going well seamlessly, then you can see how it's impacting their benchmark and progress monitoring scores on the Amplify um, M-Class dashboard as well. So because we were in a virtual setting, because we had a relationship with Amplify, because we needed a product that was going to be adaptive and supportive with these, these pillars of foundational reading, 
it was pretty much a win-win for us at that time to be able to adopt it, especially in a population, like I said, of you know 80,000 students and 160 schools. Uh, we needed to be able to have something that was pretty much ready to go at that time. We are so grateful um, that you have this trust with Amplify. And I think um, we, our company has demonstrated a real commitment to educators as along with students in terms of supporting them. Um, the others of you are more school-based. So I don't know if you um, influenced your district's consideration of Amplify Reading. Um, does anyone want to add to what Christopher has said? I can join in. Um, I definitely agree with Christopher and you know, obviously, like all of us, um, needed something through the pandemic. But prior to that, in our area, um, in eastern North Carolina, we were hit by Hurricane Florence. Mm -hmm. And our school in particular was out of school for 12 weeks, so over a full quarter of the school year. And um, with that came a lot of learning loss. And then that following year was um, the pandemic hit. And so um, we call them our Flow Coco kids, our Florence COVID <laughs> COVID kids, who um, still have that bit of a learning gap. And so one of our biggest proponents of um, our consideration for adopting the Amplify Reading Program was the learning loss that our students had um, from Hurricane Florence and then the pandemic. And something just, uh, you know, we just really enjoyed the program and how it was laid out, um, how it aligned to the science of reading as North Carolina was a big um, proponent. Um, and laying out all these things like the letters training and things like that. Um, but also that the students had the opportunity to learn and grow at their own pace. This was something that um, the students are going through a series of quests through the program. And if they're not meeting their goals, then the program is automatically adjusting for that student. And so as a classroom teacher and now an administrator, that's just something I adore about the program because it doesn't matter what type of student you are. You could be a high flyer. You could be a struggling kid. It is constantly adjusting specifically for you. And so not every kid might have the same quest at the same time. And so that's just something that we really um, um, liked about the program. The adaptability is the word that I'm looking for, for the kids. Um, and it just is a beneficial beneficial resource for all. Like, and when I say all kids, that was something that we looked at. Our EL students, our EC students, our gifted students, um, it just meets the needs of everybody. And so uh, that was something that our district took into consideration when looking at the program. And I think it's important for us to think about meeting students' needs. You know, uh, it, Carissa mentioned earlier how she was in a situation where some really terrible weather was bearing down on her location. And yes, in Eastern North Carolina, as in other um, states, um, these recurring events, and I love that flow. I mean, I don't, I don't love that we had Florence COVID COVID, but this um, desire to problem solve. Um, and so this idea of we are the flow COCO group and um, what, that teachers are considering along with administrators is how can we best support moving forward? This is the reality and there's no need to continue to rehash that, but now what can we offer to students? Um, so our next question um, really has to do with how we're using Amplify Reading now. Um, Jaylene, I know that you guys have been using Amplify Reading in Arizona. Um, tell us what's happening now with your use of Amplify Reading there. Of course. So at my school, uh, we do have this time period that is called Reteach and Enrich. It's uh, roughly 45 minutes at the most, where in every classroom, K through 8, that the teachers are supposed to focus on individual based, but also as best as they can with a full classroom of 30 plus students. Um, also trying to identify the students who are, you know, flying a little higher or need an extra time frame or extra time to work and figure out uh, different things. 
so lowering that level for them. As you can imagine, uh, having 30 plus students, all with a variety of needs, all in different varying levels, also thanks to COVID, uh, that's really difficult. So when we found Amplify Reading and how, again, how individualized and adaptive it can be, it's amazing. It's the first thing that our students will get on. Um, it's a perfect time frame to have their own just maybe 15 minutes of centering themselves coming into the classroom and allowing the teacher to then pull other students into small groups while making sure that your student is still focused and is gaining from that time versus just putting them on busy work while they wait around so the teacher can work with certain students that need this lesson and other students that need this. So it has been perfect for our time period in the setup that we've already had in working in our school. And then again, the data that comes from it is just incredible. And I could talk about that all day long. <laughs> We're gonna um, get back to that. That's yes, for sure, Jaylene. But we definitely do use it. My teachers now have a, a basis of what to do during those time periods too, of uh, what needs those kids are not necessarily hitting in the program individually. So that is also used during that time period. Mm -hmm. I love hearing that. And we have certain recommendations um, for K-2 students and 3-5 students. And, and we'll talk about that as we as we move forward. I love the idea that it happens first thing in the morning and it could set the set the day um, in terms of being positive and the children are enjoying it and it, they're learning and, and excited about that. Mm -hmm. um, Martina, you also um, are based in one school. You're a classroom teacher. Tell us how you're using Amplify Reading to address the literacy needs in your classroom or, or throughout your district. Yep, so being in one classroom, um, this is, and I'm going to say this, this is the largest class that we've had um, in third grade with only being 24. Our district is extremely small with only a total of 600 kids um, and two schools. So 24 kids is a lot, um, but this group of third graders was really the ones that were hit hard with COVID because these were the kindergartners that went virtual. So they lost a lot of instruction time in the classroom. Um, so what we've found is through Amplify Reading, we are trying to provide the kids with about three different experiences throughout the week where they can spend 15 to 20 minutes on the app. Um, and that will be during our win time. So win stands for what I need. And that is usually our intervention time. So I have the, the class on Amplify Reading, and then I have a group of students that I'm pulling back for that individualized um, instruction that they might need to try and, and hit specific skills. So everybody's still getting some kind of intervention because I like to think of Amplify Reading that way too. It's a, it's a great process you know, for kids who are struggling and then also a great program for kids who aren't and just need to just keep their skills where they're at or, or increase their skills. Um, but I can really know that my kids are on something safe and secure and it's vetted um, versus trying to find something on my own time to provide all of the other kids who aren't working with me with something to do. That is really powerful. I'm so glad you mentioned that. Yes, we know that sometimes teachers are on their own in terms of finding uh, materials to use or programs to share with their students. And as much as we may believe that a particular um, app or a particular program is safe. It, it is always sort of uh, a, a little bit risky to think about having our students online and what they can get to, um, even if they're supposed to be in a certain area, how little it takes for a child to find themselves in an area that, that isn't quite so safe. Um, yes, that's certainly important. Does anyone else want to talk to us about um, how you're using Amplify Reading currently. I'll jump in. Um, and I think, you know, everybody on the panel pretty much hit it on the head with, you know, using this as a support to your core curriculum and helping close those learning gaps. And so um, I just thought I'd share in my classroom um, when I was a classroom teacher, uh, our kids set goals for a certain amount of time 
And so they just had a little time chart, like for second grade, it was 45 minutes a week. And if they use that 45 minutes a week with fidelity, um, then you could really see the growth in our students. So my kids loved that. They had their little chart. They had a little man or a girl, whatever, the little emoji person, whatever it was that year that we used to track. And the kids just moved up like 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And when they got to that 45 minute goal at the end of the week, they just, they were celebrated and, you know, all the things. And um, so we were able to mark that in their leadership notebooks and the kids just loved um, being able to see that visual of, oh, I got my 15 minutes by, you know, Tuesday, by Wednesday, I had another 15 minutes by Thursday, I had a little bit more. And by Friday, I had my 45. And um, it was just a good visual for them to be able to track and each grade level in our school and district um, has a recommended usage for time. So um, second grade was about 45 minutes. And I I don't want to speak incorrectly for the other grade levels, um, but I believe like kindergarten was 15 to 30, um, first through third, I think it was about 45, and I'm not sure for fourth and fifth grade, but um, I don't think it was too far off 45 minutes. So but that's how we used it in our school. Right, and making the connection between the amount of usage and the results. We know that with all of these curricular programs or assessments, there are certain guidelines um, through which the program has been validated. And um, we gonna, we're going to uh, use that fidelity to see the best um, outcomes. So I love that. Um, Carissa, if you would show us our next slide. Martina. In terms of the Im impact Amplify Reading has had on your students, uh, it's my understanding that your district piloted Amplify Reading before any decisions. And then there were discussions on how to go forward. So can you share with us how you all determined the scope of how Amplify Reading would be used? Yep, so as you mentioned, um, we had the opportunity, our, dis, our director of curriculum and instruction kind of got a hold of myself and another um, district tech integrator and just said, you know, hey, we've got this program that we can use for free for right now. So let's try it out. But I want you guys to kind of spearhead it, try it out, see what you think. Um, so we pushed it out to staff and we had everybody using it uh, throughout the district. But it did have a lot of hiccups just because it was released, but not a lot of training had been associated with it. And so um, the teachers who felt strong enough to kind of find that professional development on their own and work out the kinks on their own continued using it. And then the teachers who didn't unfortunately stopped. So we had, you know, very uneven results. Um, this past school year, our director came back to us and said, you know, we have the opportunity to continue using Amplify Reading. However, the last school year, there were uneven results. So we need to have a clear, kind of clear plan as to what we're going to be doing um, from here on out. And so, like I said, the other district tech integrator and myself, we sat down and we vetted the entire program, um, going through security, going through the benefits and the deficits of what we see with Amplify Reading. And we determined that um, the benefits obviously outweighed the, the deficits that we saw. However, this time around, when it's being implemented, it is being implemented with a requirement and less of a, a recommendation. Um, so it's something that we are using with our core instruction. And so this is something that because it's, you know, both are Amplify, we're trying to really push and say they're they're going to be partnered together and we are going to be using them um, because it has been very impactful and very helpful for students across different levels. It's so hard to implement something new, and it's not unusual to experience those bumps in the road that you described. Um, I love to hear when customers um, make that commitment and, you know, continue uh, moving forward, just like anything else in our lives that is new and different. Um, a one-off or, you know, a short period of time of use 
never really demonstrates um, the kind of results that we know we can get when we actually stick with something. I also, <clears throat> excuse me, I also I, I appreciated your sharing that some teachers went on their own and sought more help. And it's much better, obviously, when when we can provide training and um, teachers hear that same message. But it also is super powerful when teachers take it upon themselves to say, I'm going to find out more about this. It's not about me. It's about how this is going to benefit these sweet children in front of me. Thanks for sharing that story. Christopher, what would you say about Amplify Reading? Because I know you're, I think you told me you were in your third year yep. of you. Tell us a little bit about the impact. Um, I'm just trying to, like, I'm definitely resonating with um, what everybody's saying on the panel right now. But, you know, what the essence of what we're talking about is differentiation for students and making sure that we're meeting the needs of individual students based on their foundational skills. And to be honest, based on our experience, yes, we do core instruction, but that Amplify Reading differentiated adaptive platform is a huge benefit because of the game-like structure, because uh, we implemented a strategy. It was 10 to 15 minutes uh, at each sitting for two to three times a week. So therefore that would be 30 to 45 minutes. So mm -hmm. that was our, from the get-go uh, for three years now is our threshold for how long we want students to be on it. But just like these guys are saying, it's about the, the continuity. It's about making sure that you know, it's not a hit it and just, you know, do it a couple times and you know, not reach uh, the actual impact that we're hoping to get out of it. It's for the long term investment. Um, so with this type of a benefit, it's it's a part of the overall strategy. It's just not something that's working in isolation. It does not take the place of core instruction. You know, it is supporting, you know, student development especially coming at the right time during the pandemic when you needed to have some version of personalized learning to support, you know, I call it spinning plates so that, you know, you're going to spin this plate over here, but you have to have this over here going at the same time. So Amplify Reading uh, Personalized Instruction definitely was something that came at the right time for our kids. Um, but the thing that also resonated really for me um, is the sustainability and the scalability that you need to have. Scalability in our district is you cannot train teachers one time. You probably have to do it one, two, three, 15 different times. You have to revisit it at different times of the year. You have to make sure that there's an understanding about the value of what kids are getting by participating in this experience. Um, once teachers, educators start to see the value, once they start to see their kids actually benefit from it, it actually does the work for you. But then when you include in the conversation turnover and retention and making sure that you have teachers, classroom teachers and administrators all on the same page at the same time, somebody put in the chat about is the data aligned to the science of reading or is it standards based? It's very much specific to the measure level science of reading, very granular level data that you'll get from Amplify Reading, very similar to M class, not exactly the same, but it easily makes it transferable to instructional practice in the classroom. Um, so scalability and building the value across the district, but you just can't do it once. You have to do it repeatedly um, just to make sure that it has a long lasting impact with your population. Um, but that's just been my experience, you know, working with literally thousands of teachers from across the district, but um, we just make sure that we have a very consistent um, and somebody said going from recommendation to required, it's really important to go into a required mindset where this has to happen because you're going to see the impact in the long run. Wow. All of this is so powerful. Um, I'm thinking about your 80,000 students, and I know probably half of them are um, at the elementary level, but to think that 40,000 students are benefit, benefiting, and you know this from the data that you obviously have been gathering. Carissa, um, in terms of our very last question for our panelists, could you jump in and talk to us about this? Yes, absolutely. So, and I was just like, mm -hmm, like nodding and it's so fun to hear each of your different experiences because it does just shed some light for some folks who maybe they're just starting this journey. 
Um, Christopher, I really like that you were deliberate in saying is it's not supposed to take the, it's not supposed to substitute core instruction, right? It's just to enhance or to remediate, to review what was happening in core instruction, but certainly not meant to take the place of it. Um, and then going into the reports, I know that there was a question into how do we read the reports, SOR, based science reading. Um, and so I'm going to actually first ask this question with Jaylene, as um, you were first talking to us about how you were looking at reports. Mm -hmm. um, and then I'm going to share what that looks like in terms of how um, the efficacy reports within Amplify Reading have been conducted and what that looks like now for the 2022-23. So Jaylene, I would love if you can kick us off with, um, have you been utilizing the Amplify Reading reports? And if so, how? Yes. Yeah. Actually, um, so I mentioned this is our second year using Amplify Reading. Uh, last year, I remember I was struggling so much because there were certain components that I wish it had. And one of the reasons I love Amplify is because it's a constantly growing like business, I've noticed, and you're constantly doing things. And so this year, actually, you guys came out with a whole new setup for the uh, data reports that you can get from Amplify Reading. And I was overjoyed. I was like, oh my gosh, they actually just made everything I've been looking for. <laughs> like I requested it a year ago and it's here already. It was incredible. Um, it's super useful for district level because I'm able to see um, an over branching look. So if I'm just looking at one of our tools, I can see all 400 students and the levels that they're at. And then it goes so detailed into the individual student and where each individual student is. And it also identifies things um, personally for each individual student. So you can also, I personally have uh, my interventionist looking through their data. I will, they'll be like, what does this kid need to work on? Because sometimes there's just isn't that time for the teachers and the interventionist to have that uh, working together time so they could be like, oh yeah, this kid's failing at this. I'm just like, oh, I'll pull up the report on Amplify Reading and we'll see what they were struggling with yesterday when they were working on their computer time. And it gives you exact things. I think before Cynthia was mentioning how it gives you recommendations and actual lessons to teach the students and work with them. I am able to use it to see um, in my district, growth is huge. We are all about growth. Our students aren't at the highest levels, but we have huge jumps of growth. And that's one thing that I super appreciate about the data that I get from Amplify Reading is it shows that growth. It shows the expectancy levels of where they should be at at a certain time period, what they should be doing to kind of get there. And it helps, it again, gives you everything you need to help bridge those gaps as someone from the level of a direct instruction to intervention all the way up through like full classroom support so the reports are perfect and wonderful I can talk about it nonstop. <laughs> like I mentioned um thank you so much for sharing that and mm -hmm. yes you're exactly correct and that is one thing that I too value one working with an amplify but I was a user of amplify reading m class um, looking at m class intervention and it is forever changing, right? And so using new research to change it and to get the reports and you can see it from a, uh, if you have two seconds and you wanted to see how your class is doing, you can look at it from more of a school-based, how are different teachers uh, looking at different classrooms and then individually within students. Um, before I jump into what the efficacy report goes into, and then we'll look at some of the reports and some of the new enhancements within Amplify Reading to share with any, anyone. I would like to first pause and see either Martina or Christopher, um, how have you been utilizing the Amplify Reading reports? Well, Colleen. I can jump in. Um, as a classroom teacher, there was a, um, like a parent report that I use for students. So I would send those home with interims and report cards. And that just kind of gave um, 
parents an idea of like what the usage was like. So you're kind of protecting that screen time. I never had my students on it for more than 10 to 15 minutes for three times a week. So, which is the recommended usage time, but also, um, you know, our school is very big on the amount of screen time kids have. And so that was important for the parents to see that we are protecting that time for their kids at school. Um, and so it showed like how often they were on it. It showed where they were at. As a teacher, I could pull up a report and I can see um, what the usage was like, what quest a student is on, what their skill progression is, and if they had any troubled spots. So, um, and then if you also use uh, Dibbles and there's a component that talks to Amplify Reading that says if a student is, um, at their typical growth or if they're not growing enough or what their trouble spots are and how you can target those students for intervention and kind of help out. Then the skill view, I love that. Um, as a classroom teacher, I can see what students in my class or within my school are doing well with key ideas and details, what students are doing well with vocabulary, what students are doing well with advanced decoding or early decoding or letter combinations and I can use that information and data to differentiate for my students outside of the program. And so that was something that um, I liked a lot as a classroom teacher, but I also enjoy now as an administrator, I can go in and see what the usage is like across my school. Are my teachers using this with fidelity? Are our students growing from the use of, um, of this resource? And um, what classes are, growing more and why, what's the difference? Um, what is this teacher doing to help implement this resource versus maybe a newer teacher who just feels like they don't have time to fit it in yet? And how can I help that teacher um, modify their schedule and make sure that they're getting this time in? How can I um, allow, like help teachers be more intentional with their station time and not as much as I love all the fun crafty things, and that's great, you can have a craft station, but make one of your stations an Amplify Reading Station. It's an easy way to get it in. And so just, it gives me an idea of who in the school I need to help better integrate it into their usage. Um, so, I, I mean, there's benefits for me for all sides. As a classroom teacher, I love the reports to send home. And then as an administrator, I like the report so I can see who's using it with fidelity and who might need help. Mm -hmm. And so um, I hope that was helpful. Mm -hmm. No, so helpful. And I think that it's helpful in, in two perspectives, right? Because we do have teachers here. And so how can I use this or how can I share this with caregivers or families at home? And so there is a courts where you can really have those purposeful conversations with your students at home. Like, what are you working on? I know certainly, and maybe y'all have similar um, conversations with your kids is my kids would go and talk to their family members or their parents. And they were so excited about Amplify Reading. They were on it all the time. And it was during COVID. I'm like, you guys need to give your little eyeballs a break. Please go outside and go play. As much as I want you to be on Amplify Reading, go throw a football or go run around and play tag. Um, and, it, and it's working for them, right? And so using the reports, so that way we can provide purposeful planning for our students, right, to provide, I think, as Christopher was saying, that differentiation. And not only just is it putting kids on that deficit model thinking this is the lowest skill that kids are working on, but it's also looking at what rigorous um, instruction can they continue to work on um, because it's providing both remediation and acceleration at that same exact time. So I would I wanted to start. Oh, so sorry. I just wanted to add about the customer or the parent caregivers uh, yeah, please do. Uh, coming from a standpoint of, again, a heavy EL population. So a lot of our families are non-English speaking, Spanish only speaking. Mm -hmm. And I actually use those reports all the time. I find them as an amazing tool and I have my teachers use them, work with, uh, to send home to their students because they do provide them in English and Spanish. And it is so helpful for the parents as well. And I've even had a couple parents end up asking like, oh, can do you have one that I could work on with my student at home? But it's, I, it's so hard sometimes to be able to give them information to use or activities to use when they themselves are not at a certain level in that language. And so the fact that the reports also come in Spanish have been so key for our parents. And it's really exciting to see our parents be able to get involved. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then that way you can have those purposeful conversations with them versus how was school, it was good, and then they're gone, right? And so it's really looking at the data reports and you can talk at something tangible with kids who are just so excited to just go home and, and I don't know, do what. But um, yeah, so thank you so much for sharing that. I am going to talk about, this is so exciting for me because maybe for y'all as well, as we see students and we're looking at the reports, it really is working. So one of our biggest headlines is our new efficacy research, which is meeting the ESSA, which is the Every Student Succeeds Act for tier two. So it's providing students um, with both how it's accelerating literacy gains for all of your kids. And so the way that this research was conducted was there were some students who were Amplify reading from K to five. There were approximately like 50 or 60,000 students using Amplify reading versus students who were not um, using Amplify Reading, I think like 150,000. The students who were on Amplify Reading outperformed the students who were on Amplify Reading, specifically kind of zooming in on that focal point of kindergarten, where nearly half of Amplify Reading kindergarteners were, um, who were at risk of not meeting those end of the year benchmarks, um, were outperforming their counterparts. And so I love to share this because not only is it fun and it's a game and kids are kind of busy, which is great for you as a teacher or as a parent because they're kind of quiet, but it works for them. Um, and so we have an efficacy report flyer where we can share all of this information. Um, and while this efficacy data is a great celebration and it really just brings a big smile into my face from ear to ear, there are some new features as well, and I saw some questions in the chat, um, looking at the benchmark assessments. And so the benchmark assessments are embedded into Amplify Reading. So the way that this works is, unless you're an M-Class user, for, so for those of you who are, if your students are using M-Class, they're going to use that composite score to place the kids in Amplify Reading. And then when you go to the reports, you would use M-Class to get granular information on what kids need to do next. So when you're in Amplify Reading, it'll say, hey, go to M-Class, and, and then it'll bump you over to M-Class in kind of one in one place. If you are not, or you use another assessment, um, it'll actually give you um, a variety of different reports that you can use um, for your kids as well as looking at some of these other awesome reports. Here they are. You can look at it either at a classroom setting. You can look at it for individual students. And then in between benchmarks, we know that best practices, we have to have ongoing progress monitoring. And so we also have a new report where it's going to give them what's called a skills curioso scan. And kids have no idea that's what's happening, but it's giving you insight onto what's uh, growing within your students. So let me first kind of start within the benchmark assessments. So when your kids log on, they're going to get this benchmark assessment from first grade to fifth grade. It's going to be assessing them on skills that are really important into looking at if students are at risk of not meeting those end of the year benchmarks. So, for example, it'll have fluency checks, comprehension checks. One thing that I would really like to, to note and to tell all of you is we do have voice recognition on there. So for students who are getting on Amplify Reading and they're doing this benchmark assessment, maybe having headphones might not be a bad idea because they're going to have to do that voice recognition um, there. As well as in kindergarten, we're going to be looking at those prerequisite skills. So going into decoding to really pinpoint targeted instruction for our earliest students. Um, maybe you're asking, how long does this take? So it'll take students roughly about uh, 20 to 25 minutes. It just depends on the student to complete this, uh, to really uh, pinpoint where they would go. Leading into after they've taken this assessment, what does it look like? So here would be the data reporting um, on what that looks like. So Going into more of a personalized level, I click on a student and this is going to give me their personalized instruction. It's going to pinpoint what can they do, what can they not do, what do I need to continue to moderate, and then it'll also show right underneath there, is this student at risk of not meeting the end of the year benchmarks. Um, within this reporting, you'll also get graphs that look just like what Jaylene was talking about. So when you go into Amplify Reading in your teacher dashboards, and if you have five seconds to just look at it uh, uh, before you pick up your students from lunch, 
Here is going to give you an overview of where your class is. And then if you highlight over each of these different components, it'll share out where your students are in each of these different respected areas. And then from there, you can click on individual students and see, I think as Christopher was talking about that trajectory, right? And so this is gonna be based off of those uh, skills, the Curioso skill scan. Um, and it's going to show that trajectory for your students. So from there, depending on from month to month, um, kids will get this what's called a skill scan and they aren't going to know that's what it's called. It just looks like a game to them. And then based on how quickly um, students are either moving up or moving down, it's going to let you know if students are at risk. Um, and then it'll tell you right here if they are at risk or at minimal risk as well, but they're using this data and then the, the data before to really pinpoint where kids are. Um, going into, that was a lot of information. And so I do wanna stop and just share with, I know we're about a minute over, but those are just some of the best, I think, features as we're looking at this, we're getting into this new world we've had um, such a learning loss, but how can we really start to adapt this for kids? And so before we log off, I wanna see if any of the panelists or anyone, um, if there are questions in the chat that maybe we didn't get to, um, but do you have anything else that you would like to share for either new years or new users for Amplify Reading or anything that you would like to share that you just didn't get an opportunity to, but you would like to? I think Colleen, it looks like you're coming up. Okay. There was, there was a uh, question in the chat about how much time do you allocate for analyzing data and using that to create an action plan and change? Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to share quickly that at our school, we have um, three action teams, culture, academics, and leadership. And so our um, academics team um, meets monthly and um, it's a, comprised of a teacher from each grade level and myself. And we go through our Amplify data and our iReady math data at these meetings. And we determine like what grade levels are utilizing it to the best capacity, who really needs help, and each grade level representative then will go back to their PLC meetings and then they'll address any concerns with their team. Maybe there's a teammate who's struggling to find time to use it, um, things like that. And so that's kind of where we start. Mm -hmm. um, and then if we need to um, dig deeper, then um, we might hold another meeting in the month. But um, I hope that helps. I think it was... Um, Victoria that asked that question. And so, I mean, it really doesn't take a lot of time at all. I mean, it's a simple click of a button to print these reports and they're very informative of usage and um, student usage, usage, staff usage, all that. So I hope that was helpful, Victoria. Thank you so much, Colleen. And I do want to be respectful of everyone's time. There's so much fun information to share. Um, I, if you would like to contact me uh, or anyone, um, I know I personally can come and talk to you or just do a virtual conversation with the reports if we have more questions and or just getting more videos as well with an Amplify reading. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all the panelists. Thank you so much for all the folks who are joining us right now. Thank you to all the folks who are gonna be joining us um, later on virtually. You can go on any of these on-demand webinars and learn more about building capacity around MTSS or research-based instruction. Um, and so thank you again and happy holidays to each and every one of you. Please stay safe and don't forget to unplug. As soon as you're done, just turn that email thing off and go enjoy your family. So thank you again so much. And it was a pleasure.